And I'll turn it over to Claudia. Great. Thank you so much, Amy. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Claudia Holland, Chief of the Bureau of Library Development in the Division of Library and Information Services. It's great to see everybody on the call today. I, I, I would like to see you if, if you have a camera uh, and you can turn it on, that would be great. If you can't um, and you just have audio, that's fine too. Um, if you're having any bandwidth issues with your camera on, you can turn it off and then turn it back on when you're talking, if you want. Um, or of course, if you're on the phone, we will love to hear you via the phone. And chat also works if, if you prefer that or if that's uh, the option that you have. We're just glad to have you today. Uh, those of you who have attended DLIS discussions before know that uh, typically I invite a few library staff from around the state to talk about the topic of the day and what they're doing at their libraries regarding that topic. But then wouldn't you know it, Tropical storm or Hurricane Nicole showed up, and I, you know, I figured that libraries probably had a, a few other priorities to focus on, so I just didn't reach out to people. And I'm so glad that you are here today to talk about what you're doing in your libraries and what you're interested in doing, um, sharing what your challenges have been. Uh, and providing new services or existing services that, you know, may, may be something different has shown up that you want to talk about. Um, but really, I'm going to rely on y'all to, to carry the day today, uh, because I know that you have a lot to share and a lot of interest in this topic, because we have a lot of people who obviously have signed up. Um, so I'm, I'm going to ask you to share, I might even just call on you. This could be, you know, like another one of those um, uh, bl uh, blasts from the past. Uh, uh, I'm calling on you, Michael Bryant. I see you. <laughs> um, uh, but otherwise, I, I really won't do that probably, but maybe. Um, what I want to do is just start, first of all, by asking you all what what exactly does external library service mean to you? You know, what, do we are do we all have the same point of view on what that means? Does that mean something on your grounds, or does it mean something completely remote? Well, Claudia. Yes. Um, you didn't call on me, but I, I would share. Um, I think about um, what does library services mean is to um, provide um, the services um, that our community needs, be it uh, for information or recreation or education. We, uh, we want to be able, be able to provide the services um, that the individuals in our county are looking for. Awesome. Thank you, Michael. I appreciate your stepping up to the plate and I didn't even have to call on you. That's great. Um, we um, have some people who are also comment. sharing online. Who, who was, go ahead. I can make a comment if I'm. <laughs> hey, Jeff, yes, okay. please. Well, um, I joined this to find out uh, if there's anybody that's uh, participating that your county also has a bookmobile like Polk County has. Just curious as to how you run yours and let you know about ours if you're interested. So Jeffrey, I'll say yes here at the Miami Dade. My name's Marlon, Marlon Moore from the Miami Dade Public Library System. Nice to see you all. And yes, we do have several bookmobiles here at Miami Dade. Wow. That's awesome. Ours is, ours is about the size of a, of a UPS, uh, you know, good size UPS, what they call a bread truck mm -hmm. type of style. Um, what are your uh, vehicles? What size are your vehicles? So we have, uh, let's see, three, and then our new bookmobile van. And our three vehicles, the larger ones are older. So those are about, and I've got a couple of my, 
our my colleagues here on the line with me. So jump in, folks, if I'm messing everything up. Um, but we've got two that are about 34 feet. We call them bookmobile trucks, but they're really kind of like a a, a, a bus, really. And then the larger one is about 39 feet long. And that's really like a full bus size. And then we've just uh, uh, procured the bookmobile van, which is about 24 feet. That's helpful. Ours is about 30 feet. Okay. Thank you. My pleasure. What kind of challenges have you had and with the bookmobiles? Well, for us, we had to cut shut down obviously with COVID and uh, that was from March, 2020 to about June, 2021. It took a while to reestablish our clientele, but uh, one, ac one thing for us is, is access. You know, we have three or four steps that are difficult for some of our seniors to navigate and some of them won't come because of that. Mm. Otherwise we have, you know, very active uh, participation in our stops. Carla uh, has um, uh, commented in chat. She says, I do pop-up libraries in the community areas that are farthest from a branch or for, for foreclosed branches. Uh, but she wants to know how to get a bookmobile. So how did you all get your bookmobiles? Hi, Carla. This is Katie from Walton County, and I will jump on this because this has been a journey for us here in Walton County. Um, uh, we had a bookmobile funded by the state through an LSTA grant back in 2005. Um, and that is how we got our first bookmobile. It was not in fantastic shape when we got it. It was a converted Thomas school bus and had significant issues with functionality. It was, I mean, I don't wanna say it was a lemon, but it was kind of a lemon. And we did the best we could with it for many years. Um, but when COVID happened, it had, we had really minimized its use a lot. Um, just due to functionality. So that is when, in 2019 is when I began our journey to actually get another bookmobile. So we actually wrote another LSTA grant to the state. It was um, qualified and it was not funded because the by the time it got to our grant in the rankings, it there, there was not enough funding to fund it in full. We resubmitted the next year and our state is so wonderful and we love them, Claudia, but then they changed the rules where you can't fund a vehicle. That wasn't BLD, but you can't use state funds for a vehicle. So mark LSTA off your list just in case they change, uh, unless they change that in the future. So then I was back to the drawing board. This was the third year in a row I'd been looking for this grant. So we actually found a community foundation in our, um, we're in the panhandle of Florida and we found a community foundation. And one of the big things they wanted was to fund like technology and public services. So we wrote it as a, kind of in a recreation type category where we went in recreation, working at getting to those um, more rural communities and expanding education and access to technology. Those were all really some of the key things that that group likes to fund. And they funded the construction of our brand new bookmobile that is arriving in two weeks um, entirely through their foundation. So um, those traditional type things were not the best for us. And it really just took realigning what our vision was um, to the community and because, you know, people think, oh, bookmobile, okay, you're going to drive around and give books to people. But ours was really pulling in a lot of those programming efforts and that access to technology and Wi-Fi um, and getting that out into our community with things like um, an ADA accessible ramp. Half of our shelves are actually on casters and we can take them out of the bookmobile and into assisted living facilities to deal with mobility. So a lot of it is just looking around and I would recommend um, finding groups in your area that are interested in funding things like this and figure out their priority areas and really focus on how what you have can align with what they are willing to fund. So don't give up. I started this in 2019 and it's just now getting here. So there was a lot of a lot of movement to get this going, but um, our, our biggest thing that we found was finding those private foundations that were willing to help. And oh, and a little sneaky thing with that, um, our friends group wrote 
the grant because they are a 501c3 nonprofit and then they are donating it to our county for operations. Great points, Katie. Um, I would like to mention too, and uh, may maybe somebody is gonna bring this up, uh, that um, the challenge too of ordering a bookmobile within a certain time frame is it takes at least a year and a half to two years to get that bookmobile. So keep that in mind when you are applying for money from whatever source, if they have some sort of deadline as to when you need to spend that money by. Um, you know, I don't know, if, uh, I don't think this had anything to do with supply chain <laughs> issues in the past. I think it's just the nature of the beast, but I, I you know, maybe somebody else has some comment on that. Um, in chat, we have gotten- I, I wanna jump in on that if I may. Please Claudia. do. Thank uh, you, Marlon, yeah. Just because you pricked a nerve that it's, it's, it's um, uh -oh. it's tender. <laughs> uh -oh. But yeah, you're, you're right about that. You know, definitely look at the timeline about, uh, you know, regarding ordering vehicles because it is, it is a really big deal right now. And it, you know, the folks that we're talking to they are saying that it does have to do with the supply chain, you know, with computer parts, the chips and all that stuff. And a lot of make a lot of uh, different types of um, automobile companies are not making certain vehicle types anymore just because of the lack of supplies. And, uh, you know, a lot of these things, like you said, are at least, you know, a minimum of a year to you know a year and a half and then some things they don't even have a timeline yet on when they're even going to be available anymore stuff that used to be you know types of uh, chassis that used to be available you know within a couple of months or they had them on on hand or not even available now so that is a really big thing to think about and Marlon, yeah, this is Katie at Walton County again. I'm so glad you said that. We have had pushbacks with ours, um, and a lot of it was just communicating with the grant foundation who gave us the money, those things. Um, so we actually had to deviate from our original design because they had no delivery timeline for the chassis that we had originally written our, our grant for and gotten the quote on. Um, they were willing to work with us and gave us some options. They had some that they were able to buy like off of a state contract for government contracted um, uh, like libraries and things like that, health departments. But we did have to modify our design. So I was so in love with this vehicle that we had designed and then being told, oh, it can't look like that. We have another option or you can wait an additional year or more until we know we can get this. So I think that's super important too when they're planning process for anyone planning is just be flexible. And sometimes it's it may not be the best of the best, but take what you can get because they still to this day do not have the chassis that we originally designed. And we started this process in December of last year. So wow. um, yeah, we. and then the biggest thing with ours right now too, Claudia was a supply chain, it was the generator. They were done with our vehicle and they could not get the generator. Um, it was back ordered until December. Thankfully, it was a little earlier than that. But yeah. yeah, that's it's been hard to try to have to shift your vision and your mindset to be able to know that for me, it wasn't about getting that exact thing. It was being able to provide those services to my community. And if this vehicle will accomplish those same goals, I had to shift my mindset that this was going to be just as fine function wise. Good points, Katie. It sounds to me like what you're suggesting too is you know, have like your ideal, but then also have a backup plan for a different chassis or, you know, I don't know, all, all the options, I guess, that they, uh, the uh, company gives you in terms of, um, you know, I mean, I, I would never even thought of a chassis having a different option for a chassis, but whatever. Um, so good points. Thank you. We have a couple of questions from people. Um, one person asked, do you send one person in your bookmobile or do you have two for safety? Uh, do you have multiple drivers? Do you have a, the same driver for the same vehicle if you have more than one vehicle in your fleet, so to speak? Um, any comments on that? Well, I can respond from my point of view. Um, our vehicle, Polk County is 
right cent dead central of the state. And it's one of the biggest counties, if not the biggest. And our stops are about six or seven each week. And then we, one week we have a scheduled, second week we have a different one, and then we repeat. Um, the, uh, the vehicle is, uh, ours was custom built in 2007 and Lakeland Library was the operator. Then uh, the driver retired and um, she was the only driver. They did have a backup, but uh, the branch I operate out of Lake Wales took it over and changed a few policies, but I've been the only driver. Uh, we don't have a backup partly because the insurance originally required uh, us to have us, the driver to have a CDL license, which I have. However, the vehicle doesn't require it because it doesn't have air brakes and it's not over the weight limit. Mm -hmm. uh, now the insurance has shifted to where anybody with a, just a regular class, what is a class D, regular driver's license can drive it, but um, it is kind of a bear <laughs> in the wind, especially. And it, it takes somebody with good experience and, and, and it would take, if they've never driven anything this size, uh, a good amount of time uh, behind the wheel. Uh, but otherwise I only have, for me, I work a 40 hour week, 30, uh, about 32 of it's on the road. And uh, I only have uh, help on like events when we do special events. And there might be, you know, a couple hundred people that visit the Pocomphile. Um, and I'm the solo driver, so if I'm sick or take off, we cancel the we cancel the spot. Um, this is Belle from Lake Wales, and we're thankful that Jeff um, is the driver for the bookmobile. And I I go I have been on there with him, and yeah, I would not be able to drive that thing. It's huge, and you know he takes those corners like a pro. And I'm like, no, I probably hit a couple of trees. <laughs> yeah, you know, so, so we are thankful for that, but we are trying to get him a backup, and that's that's the big that's one of the challenges that we are experiencing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, Harold, do you want to? I know you had your hand up a minute ago. Where'd you go? Um, there you are. Would you like I, to talk a little bit about your? Sure. Well, I did put it in the chat that we only we have. Right, currently, right now, our department is smaller than it was. We have a primary bookmobile that's probably, oh, I would say it's about the size. It's about the size lengthwise, maybe in a UPS truck, but it doesn't seem as as monumental as that. It's pretty easy to drive. We only have one person on board it is, as a rule when it goes out. We're very clear and very, very, we, we've made it as well known as possible that we do not take any sort of payments aboard the bookmobile because we don't want it ever to be looked at as something that might be carrying cash. Yeah. And also at this time we go to locations, you know, it's, it's funny because when we think of underserved populations, we don't necessarily think of, of, of uh, affluent neighborhoods where we actually have what I call library deserts in our county in the north and the, the part of our county that's been really well developed. So we have been sending our bookmobile to these areas with, and keeping them in public parking lots so that they're in high profile locations. And we feel like that's a relatively um, safe um, place for them to be. Mm -hmm. Although we do have a couple locations that were the, the, the business has experienced so much growth that we actually are pitching a tent outside of one of our bookmobiles. And we're there to take all the returns so that the crowd that's going aboard the bus isn't quite as, as cramped because it's that they could use a library right now. And so we are really the wow. stand-in, truly a stand-in for a library there. Wow, but good point. When we have we have a bigger, much older vehicle right now that's having generator issues, and we're hoping that that can be solved because if nothing else, it really is just more accommodating. But it's always something, but we always figure out a workaround. Right. So let's talk a little bit about maintenance and, and insurance and that kind of thing. How do you um, build that in to the, you know, your operating costs each year? And uh, just want to know yeah. how much of a burden that can be for everyone. Well, we do have some standard, you know, like a standard budget, but every now and then we get surprises. 
you know. <laughs> yeah. We we really would like to replace the generator on our older vehicle, but they told us that it would be thirty eight thousand dollars. Wow. Now wow. I'm having a hard time believing that, but that's the answer we got. Wow. So we're like, okay, so what can you do? To, let's do a tune up. Let's let's just see what we can to get the blood out of that turn up. But thirty eight thousand dollars seems like a lot to invest in a vehicle that's more than twenty years old. But it's still a very solid vehicle. So that's the tough part. Oh, that's good. There's always a surprise. Uh, Barb, I, I don't know. I, I don't see your name on the my board, but um, she, Barb uh, Swinson says, I had a major problem with the Lee County bookmobile in 2013 when we suffered a rat infestation. It was a 42 foot customized bookmobile. Wow. How did y'all handle that? Can you hear me okay? Hi. Hey. Yeah, that was right when I started that job too. Um, oh man. <laughs> yeah, I, I just moved down from New Jersey. So um, we basically had to take it off the road. It was unsafe. There were uh, rat droppings and they took some special light and identified uh, tracks of uh, urine and everything like that. It had gotten in, um, it was nesting because the bookmobile was parked outdoors uh, with a cover. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't sealed um, at the building at one of our regional libraries is where it was housed. So it went in for servicing. It got gutted, totally gutted. Uh, the collection got taken off. It was off the road for a while. And then uh, Lee Transportation had to loan us. They loaned us a trolley. So we could That's still cute. do our stops. Mm -hmm. um, and I just, I had my director in at the branch, our public services manager. And I said, this is a health issue. You know, we wouldn't allow this in any of our branches and our bookmobile is just a library on wheels. So we had to take care of it. It was, um, it was stressful. <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah. But um, it came back, it got back on the road. They did some exclusion work on it. So it was underneath, you know, where they had to put um, some wire meshing and some steel wool mm -hmm. so that they couldn't get back in there. So you kind of live it, you kind of learn as you go sometimes, right? Yeah. Well, it's good to know there are uh, solutions <laughs> to keeping uh, certain critters out, you know, and because if you have a huge um, bookmobile, I mean, where else are you going to put it but outside unless you're fortunate enough to be able to house it somewhere that, you know, with your county or I'm assuming you're not going to have some big garage at your library, but you never know. Uh, maybe, maybe it's available somewhere, but those are good points. Um, Cheryl asks if there's someone from Largo Library here. I don't know if there's someone from Largo here. Guess not, but she's, she talks about, Cheryl, you can jump on too if you'd like, talk about the long road and the huge success of their bookmobile. Hi, thanks, Claudia. It's so good thanks, to sir. see you. I good don't have you. my camera on because there's more than one person in the room. Oh, wow, well, um, we wanna see you all. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm I'm here sitting next to Gary Earl, our countywide services coordinator, because okay. we wanted to brag about our pop-up library. But um, but I'll just tell you about the Largo Library. They, I think, 10 years took them about 10 years to raise the money through their foundation. Mm -hmm. And um, then they launched it and it's been hugely successful because um they hit pockets of their um their service area that are far from their library. Largo is a very uh, large geographically, large geographic area, but they only have one library. So mm -hmm. instead of creating branch libraries, they uh, did the bookmobile thing. And that has really been a huge success. They go to places like the Y, they go to two um, YMCA's, 
um, and they go to a, um, assisted living facilities and they have, you know, a special collection that's just bookmobile items that don't, they're not mingled into the library's collection, um, dedicated driver, dedicated staff, and have done a lot of promotion. The um, thing that helped them fund their bookmobile was to wrap it with their um, donors, corporate donors. So it's wrapped with the logos of their corporate donors. Um, and, and Largo does that a lot too. They even wrap their garbage trucks with um, promotional things about, uh, they, they have a library, uh, a garbage truck that's wrapped with, you know, the library, uh, you know, go to the Largo library. Um, but um, yeah, th that's the only one in our whole county and it's been very successful. And I'm sure they've had plenty of ups and downs. I don't know about all of them. That's why I was uh, wondering if there was someone here from Largo to talk about that with you all and answer any questions that you might have. Thank you, Cheryl. Mm -hmm. um, that sounds awesome actually and you know that is kind of an interesting uh, option uh if if you don't have the funds to build uh, a a new branch and the state hasn't been very forthcoming on supporting that kind of thing in the past few years but hopefully that will change um having an option like um a bookmobile a van uh pop-up libraries, um, that kind of thing. Uh, who here has has uh, experimented or had great success with pop-up libraries? So those uh, are libraries where you can, you can either give free books away uh, or you can do, you know, have some sort of handheld checkout system um, and, and take, you know, um, the library to a location, uh, much different from a bookmobile in that you are going to a location that could be, for example, uh, in a mall or in uh, a senior center or somewhere like that um, where people, you're going to have people all the time at some, you know, uh, um, who are visiting your library. Um, who has, has anyone experimented with that? So it's different from a little free library, I think. Um, hi, this is Jill Sears. Jill. We have um, what we call it the library at Fort Lauderdale Airport. Uh -huh. um, it, it's an area where people can access our digital, they can be from all over the world, they don't have to you know, be Broward County library card holders, they can access our digital material. Um, there's a little seating area to make them comfortable. That's wonderful. And, and that's a permanent installation. Mm -hmm. So we've done that here in the Martin County Library System um, where we've actually gone to specific communities who normally can't get to us, um, whether it's transportation or if it's a language barrier. Um, we had the opportunity with ARPA funding to actually create kits. So we had created homework help kits, we created um, art kits, and then we brought book giveaways to promote a thousand books before kindergarten. And it was primarily a group of um, English as a second language speakers who were who were Spanish speakers um, who were basically moms um, who were staying home with their kids. And we paired it up with Healthy Start's diaper drive. Um, so we knew that the moms were coming to pick up diapers. And it was a great way for us to, to promote um, Dolly Parton Imagination Library uh, and, and to give away all of the ARPA funded kits. Wonderful. And I Cheryl did. has her hand up. Oh, I'm sorry. Who? Cheryl. Cheryl. Yeah, I, I did. Um, I did have Cheryl. my hand up. Thank you. Sorry. Um, <laughs> no, no problem at all. 
Um, we're really enjoying listening to all of your, God, that fly library. We're really enjoying listening to, to your stories. Um, so our county is, is um, well, we're unique like Polk County in that we're not a library system or a library cooperative of independently run libraries. Um, but we also have huge pockets of unincorporated um, Pinellas County and they don't have a library. And it's really a third of the land mass of the county is unincorporated. So the county commission really wants us to do something for the people in, in those areas, especially the economically depressed areas. Um, so we partnered with the county um, the the library, the public library that is closest to this location that the county bought in an unincorporated St. Petersburg called Lilman. And they bought a charter school and to provide services to the people of that community. So they have a Y, they have a, they have a pre-K program there. They have a lot of county offices like Cooperative Extension does a nutrition program there. Um, they have a gym and, and all kinds of things like that. And, and from, from the very beginning, before they even bought the building, they really wanted to see a library in there. What we weren't able to produce an actual uh, working library, but what we ended up doing, and we just launched it on October 1st, was create a pop-up library where, where it's more like a drive-through window. Um, books, when people put books on hold, they can select that location to pick up their books. Huh. So they pick up books there, they're checked out there by the front desk staff, and then they're returned there. And people can return items that belong to any of the libraries in the county there. And our courier goes there twice a week to drop off and pick up uh, materials. And so in, in the month and a half that it's been running, um, it's been doing pretty well. And we just really need to spend a lot of time promoting it, getting the word out to people that they can get a PPLC library card there. They can pick up any items there and they can use uh, all of the online resources with their PPLC card. So it's a location for them to get a library card that's not a library and also to get delivery of things closer to where they live. So they can walk to this location and pick up the materials that they've put on hold. Awesome. Yeah, wow. we were we were calling it a library services center until uh -huh. you sent out the invitation for this meeting and I saw the term pop-up library and I thought, oh, maybe we're a pop-up library. <laughs> it sounds so cool, doesn't it? <laughs> is there a is there a definition for pop-up library? Oh yeah, of course, yes. But I didn't write that down, but I there there is one. And it's really more of um, again, taking services to a particular location. Um, so in a way it's small, it's a smaller scale. Um, book, uh, you know, it's not a bookmobile at all because it's not on any kind of wheels, but mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's a, I think more of a permanent location, sort of like a, for a, for a time, I, I shouldn't say permanent, temporary location um, for um, providing materials, services, whatever you can do at that location that is what that particular community needs. If okay. others have uh, information about pop-ups that they wanna share, feel free. Claudia. Yes, sir. Um, at Broward County Library, we use the term pop-up library to also include uh, we have these uh, devices that are similar to, imagine a hotspot device, mm -hmm. and we have some of our digital collection on those hotspots, yeah. the devices. And so we have locations strategically placed throughout Broward County 
um, not libraries, um, but just different locations um, throughout the county where these devices are located. And you're, if you're just at this location, if you use your phone, you can detect the, um, the device and then you can download the content um, for books on your device and read it um, at that location. And you can also read it once you leave the location as well. And so we call that pop-up library as well, but it's oh. just a device at different locations throughout Broward County. Like um, we've had it at a, um, the Department of Health, we had it at a um, alternative high school and so on and so on. So let me just make sure I understand. So you have like a hotspot there. It, it, it's sort of, the, I, I was using it as a reference. Okay. Uh, imagine a, a device about the size a of a hot. Yeah, about the size of a hotspot. Yes, yes. Okay. And cool. and so and, and it has um, access to um, some of, some of our digital content. And so, for example, um, one of the high schools where we have the device, uh, they actually use it to supplement their curricula. Um, and so oh. they have um, sometimes they want to read a certain book for a um, just teachers want to use a certain book, and their school may not actually have the physical book. Oh. but they can use the device and we may have that book in our collection and so the students can download the book and use it for class so that that uh title has unlimited um check out simultaneously is that from my understanding yeah, yes, yes okay that's very that's very nice yeah uh, i, I want to uh go back to a couple of questions that people had that i did not bring up just sort of reflecting back to bookmobiles for a minute. Um, Tammy asks if any of the bookmobiles are under the vehicle replacement plan in your county. Any, any, any clues on that? So I actually um, brought this up recently with our finance director and our fleet um, our fleet maintenance supervisor, most of the departments in the county have that, and it is, I'm hoping this is what you're referring to, the replacement schedule where every year, you know, ever after 10 years or 12 years or eight years, whatever it is based on mileage, that those vehicles are budgeted for a replacement. And the library has never been on that. So I had a truck from 1994 sitting on my inventory that we didn't use. Um, and our bookmobile that we need a replacement, there was no funding. So that is a discussion that we've had both with our our board, our fleet maintenance supervisor, and our um, uh, CFO for our county. And that is um, a new thing that we're going to hopefully adopt this past next year. So I'm really glad you brought that up because I'd love to hear some success stories aside from promising our finance director she can drive the boat mobile. <laughs> Thank you, Katie. That is one of my big fears because uh, I'm exploring, obviously, bookmobiles right now, but it is so expensive to do anything that I, I did get a new delivery vehicle, so I feel pretty darn lucky, but it, they said, oh, it's going to take a year, and it took 18 months, but I feel grateful to have gotten it. Taking on a bookmobile, I, I want to know that going in, so thank you. I'll call you later. Well, and, and one of the things that was easy enough for me to justify it, it costs less than a dump truck. It costs less than these enormous, huge, massive pieces of equipment and machinery that we have for our beach maintenance and management. So when they put it in perspective of, you know, the dollar amount, and then additionally, some of our other, like our code enforcement fleet is astronomical and the dollar amount on that. So if, even if you're not looking at the specific price of a bookmobile, when they broke up ours up by department and the annual cost for that replacement schedule by department, we purchasing a bookmobile was still really low comparatively to other departments. So that was an easy enough sell as far as saying, okay, their replacement schedule is $1.4 million annually. I'm asking for, you know, say 250 every 10 years. Um, so when you break it down annually, it ended up being a lot less and by department. So that was, um, can't take any credit for that. That was our CFO's, um, contribution to the discussion, but that seemed to be um, very helpful in putting it in perspective of the actual long-term cost of this vehicle um, on, the re on the replacement schedule for us. Excellent. I think I actually have, I think my foundation will fund a good portion of a bookmobile, no matter how long it takes to get here, but keeping it going is, is going to be the thing. And, and so once we get it, 
and then get it on the replacement plan, I feel like I'd be in a good position. Thank you. That sounds like a wonderful argument, you know, uh, comparing it to other vehicles that the county purchases for serving the community. And you're serving the community just in a different way than a dump truck. <laughs> so um, let's see. I, and I just want to mention, if I may. Okay. Yeah, Go please ahead. do. Go ahead, someone was talking. Oh, I, I just want to chime in quickly for Tammy that the Polk County Bookmobile has a I'm not sure of all the detail, but it has a service contract with the fleet of the county. And like Katie was saying, um, ours, as far as ours has been for my eight years driving it, has been general maintenance, uh, you know, some parts uh, replaced, but the engine runs so well that it's, you know, kind of maintenance free, but uh, they've replaced other parts for me, um, but nothing about the vehicle but they are terrific to work with. And it's great to know that you're just gonna get in and out service and uh, you won't be, it won't cost you any stops to cancel. Thank you. Marlon. Thank you, Claudia. Yeah, I just wanted to mention that, um, you know, the young lady, uh, Katie was talking about costs, you know, and that's always very important and that's why we're we're going we're looking towards the smaller vehicles, the vans because it's you know our our larger bookmobiles are much older, and just to uh, service them and keep replacing parts it just it's it's costing taxpayer dollars so you know not to mention that you need a CDL to drive it, and so we're just really looking towards smaller vehicles, and I think we're kind of realizing bigger is not necessarily better so. Just having smaller vehicles give us a, gives us a lot more, uh, you know, leeway in terms of nimbleness and what we can accomplish in the community, and just uh, just easier um, when it comes to looking at replacement costs and uh, repairs and drivability, who can drive the vehicles and things like that as well. Good points. Anybody else have anything to add? We also had a question about, um, and I'm not sure if we answered this, but let's go back to it. Uh, with your bookmobiles, do they work like little libraries or do you use a form of uh, your loan system like your circulation and how does that work in your bookmobiles? Claudia? Yes. Um, essentially, we tell everybody that our bookmobile is another branch of the library. Yeah. Just smaller and mobile. So, you, yeah. So you just have a, a uh, your uh, ILS is just part of right. the bookmobile. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. Um, so, oh, as far as Polk County goes, the uh, when we took, when Lake Wales took over operation, um, they changed several policies. Uh, we carry about 3,000 books, including adult, mystery, young adult, and uh, kids. And uh, it was decided to only have new books. In other words, to, they get once a book arrives, it has two years to stay on the bookmobile, and then it's weeded off, mm -hmm. and new ones are constantly being brought on. Um, we, had a, we have a default four-week checkout, but we don't have overdue fines. And um, that, frankly, uh, was kind of an experiment our director at the time had that has proven so successful. Some of the branches in Polk County are now going to find free. Wonderful. Uh, Carla brought up, if she says, um, if you have a pop-up library, excuse me, what do you include when you go out into the community. And again, I think that depends too on the service that you're providing at that pop-up. But uh, she says, ours is simple, a tent, a table, sign and books all piled in my car. <laughs> I love it, Carla. <laughs> we'll do anything for the cause, won't we? Does anyone else have, uh, you know, some tried and true, um, uh, materials or tools or 
uh, promotional items that they take uh, to their pop-ups? I think you've, you've won the day on that one with the tent, Carla. <laughs> Hi. Can oh, you hear me? Hey, Noelia. Yeah. Oh, let me see if I can turn this on. Hi. Hey. <laughs> um, well, like you said, it depends on what what event we're covering. But um, for example, we we have huge community events where we do bring our tent, but we also bring um uh, like a, a giant connect four and we bring magic noodles and we have that little program going on the side as well and then we have our plinko or our you know spinning wheel with our swag and our marketing materials go de depend on what we're promoting so if we have our our reading festival coming up obviously that will be the focus uh, but if we're in a community that is focusing on English language learning, then we'll bring all those resources with us. So we always cater it to whatever it is that we are serving. Um, specifically, we have a project going on that is with the migrant camps where we visit, um, I'm from the Lee County Library System, and we visit four different migrant camps in the community. And with them, we take books in English and in Spanish uh, because there are a lot of Spanish speakers, um, but we want to incorporate to bilingual and movies and music so that it's uh, all encompassing. Um, and we bring, we do uh, story times and we do a little programs and crafts depending on how many people and um, if we have kids or we don't have kids. So we tailor it to whoever, but that's a, a fun um, pop up event that we do. Um, we be, visit each of them monthly, but each week we're going to a different location. Wonderful, thank you. Does anybody want to add to that? Uh, Belle and Kathy both talk about vending machines. Uh, 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 Bell saying that they're about to, to install, or no, we just installed a vending machine that is coming soon. I want to know what you're vending there. And then Kathy says that Palm Harbor has a vending machine at our library and one at Parks and Rec. So what, what are you vending? Um, this is Bell. I'm vending DVDs, mm -hmm. adult fiction, uh, and children's picture books. Wonderful, yeah. So we just, you know, we're trying it right now. Um, we're having a little technical difficulty. So the sign says coming soon. And people are curious because they um, they try to put their card in and it's not working. <laughs> and it's, at, it's at City Hall. So some, oh. some of the employees are letting me know, oh, you have people trying to vend the machine. So we're, we're still working on that right now. That's a good location. So it's inside. Outside. Uh, oh, it's outside. It's outside. It's like a big vending machine. It's wow. right outside the entrance of City Hall. I see. Okay. Kathy, where is yours located? Hi, I'm working with Kathy Wass. Oh. I'm not sure if she's on a microphone, but I work at Palm Harbor Library and um, I'll speak for that. Our um, our main auto lend library um, machine is right outside our door, but it's accessible 24 seven. Mm -hmm. And um, the one at Parks and Rec was having some technical difficulties. <laughs> Uh, we had low part we had to wait a couple weeks on, but that's also available 24 seven we stock it with um, our friends actually pays for what we stock it with. And um, we use um, latest and greatest fiction, uh, some nonfiction, the bestsellers, and also popular movies for adults and kids. Thank you. Uh, Michael, oh, let's see, Marlon, you had your hand up a minute ago, I think. 
There you are. Hi. Yep. I just wanted to just uh, let you all know we have the techno bus. I don't know if you've seen our techno bus, but it's kind of the same thing. It's a large vehicle. It's a bookmobile, but obviously inside it's all technology. And, you know, that I'm just bringing it up just because it's a similar tool for as an outreach um, type of a, you know, a service because sometimes if we don't bring the techno bus, we'll bring some of the technology to some of the outreach locations that we go to. And it could be as simple as, you know, bringing computers or iPads or just some really small steam kits. And it's, it's that gateway. We use it as a gateway to, to books and, you know, we have oftentimes we'll have a collection sitting right next to it. So, you know, it kind of starts a conversation or gets the kids interested in what the technology is and the parents are browsing the books. So, um, you know, and then sometimes we'll have art happening right there at the table. So it'll be a mix of the technology, the books and the artwork. And, you know, it could be something really simple, just like a, a paint by numbers kind of a, a you know, a, a program with the, you know, one of the things we just did at one of our recent events was, and we have an incredible young lady, Dinah Cortez, who's really great with art. And she just did a really cool thing with a paint by numbers butterfly and just had it sitting at the table and people came by and just grabbed a paintbrush and a, and a little bit of paint and painted and, you know, just kind of led to conversations towards books and other services. Thank you, Marlon. Uh, Michael Sullivan says that they have live uh, lockers for picking up holds, and I think several people might have those as well. Uh, his is at a community center far from the branch, which is really nice. Um, Catherine's talking about Palm Beach County looking into outreach vehicles, really more for community uh, programming, um, and I think you know that's. That's another whole topic that we could probably talk about another time because I think we've only really touched uh, the surface today of what I was hoping we would get to, but I'm so glad that y'all are sharing. Um, she talks about a, a vehicle for staff to take out to the community events with tables, chairs, possibly a tent, and a laptop to register new card holders. Um, not necessarily to circulate items since they have a bookmobile for that. Um, but she's curious if another system has something like this or is planning something like this. Uh, Winona, you, you mentioned too that you have, um, we don't circulate items, but uh, because you don't have a portable ILS, but um, you do have take and make crafts, swag, flyers, and so on. So certainly getting getting the, uh, uh, you know, community um, involved and engaged in library activities, which is wonderful. Thank um, you. Exactly. And what um, somebody else touched on, um, focusing your what you're bringing to the community you're coming to. Um, Kathy Wass, who is online, and myself and our marketing coordinator are all part of what we're calling the outreach team. So we're kind of spearheading going out to outreaches. And uh, we had something at the YMCA, so we focused on health and wellness. We had something at a senior living um, or a senior um, subdivision. So we focused on, you know, mental health and things for seniors and stuff like that. Um, we've got an upcoming uh, tree lighting ceremony in Palm Harbor. We're going to focus on the kids with that. Again, with take and make crafts, things like that. Wonderful. We have a lot of uh, um, in the chat talking about um, just different things that y'all are doing in the community. It's so wonderful what, what you're doing and, and how you're reaching uh, people who either A, can't come into the library for different reasons. Uh, perhaps they don't have transportation. Maybe they have young children and they can't, you know, whatever, um, or they're elderly. And so uh, you're, you're getting to those 
pockets, if you will, of the population who really, really need our support. Um, I did want to share with you that I was uh, looking at some materials on different kinds, you know, bookmobiles, pop-up libraries, and so on and so forth. Um, and one, one of the things that, you know, of course, there's the floating library, which we haven't talked about. And I don't know if anybody out there knows of a boat. Is anyone using a boat library uh, for, for um, outreach? Wouldn't that be fun? Oh, I would love that. Um, anyway, then there's something called the Biblio Borough in uh, Columbia. I love that. Uh, Donkey Mobile Libraries uh, in uh, places like uh, uh, Ethiopia. Um, in Leon County, there is Master Caleb's Discovery Library. This is a seven-year-old child who is the CEO <laughs> of his own little company. And it's a pop-up library that delivers free books to kids of all ages around Leon County. Seven years old, geez. Um, then there's something, uh, 10 most extraordinary mobile libraries. One is called the Weapons of Mass Instruction. <laughs> it's a it's an old like fair lane or something like that that has shelving built all the way. You have to look it up. Shelving all the way around it and on top of it. And this is in um, free free books, totally free books in uh, Buenos Aires, uh, Argentina. But you have to look that up. It looks so cool. Uh, and one more is the Logos Hope, a German vessel or ship that. Um, goes around the world, I want this job, goes around the world promoting literature and raising money for charity. And so that, you know, they can have people who, you know, are, uh, who are on board, who, you know, not only crew, but also, um, uh, what do you call it, paying customers, I guess. But it also can hold up to a thousand visitors at a time. And they've gone to like 74 different ports. Doesn't that sound awesome? Oh my gosh. Um, anyway, so y'all are doing wonderful things, and I just am so um, really in awe of the things that you are doing, and I hope that we can go back and revisit some of this sometime, because I think we have a lot more to talk about, but we are running out of time, and I want to respect the fact that you have other things to do. <laughs> um, and uh, Michael asks, isn't there a library that uses a bike and trailer for services on the beach? I think there is. Uh, I don't know if these, this person is on the call today. They're probably out enjoying you know, the weather or something. I don't know. Uh, but uh, we have so much to share with each other. And I do hope that you will join us again. Um, I don't think that we will be meeting in December for various reasons. Um, you know, holidays, of course, and we will be hosting the uh, public library directors meeting in, in the beginning of December, so we'll be busy with that. Um, but we will be meeting again on January the 16th. If you have a topic that you would like us to talk about, please, please share it with me. I would love to, to um, uh, you know, put that out there for everyone to join us in another discussion. Uh, thank you all for being with us today. Um, as Amy mentioned, we'll be sending a link uh, to the recording to, to all of you who have registered. Please feel free to share that link with anyone at your library or just somebody who might be interested. I don't know. Um, and we'll also, of course, have the, uh, the uh, link to a short survey that we really hope that you'll take just a few minutes to, to fill out so that we have feedback on how to make us better here in the Bureau. Uh, I hope that hurricane season is over for all of us. Uh, my heart goes out to all who've been uh, impacted by this season. Um, hopefully we've seen the last of it for now. Uh, you all stay safe, be healthy and happy, and I'll hope to see you in January. Thank you so much. <laughs>